Michael Orr has always survived on instinct, using a front porch for a mattress, begging neighbors for takeout, even breaking out of foster homes, doing whatever it took for the following sunrise. I guess it's an instinct everybody, you know, from the from the hood got or get or whatever you want to call it. But uh, I mean, you can, you gonna if you grew up in it, you gonna know how to survive it. So I guess that's what it is. He had a very rough, hard upbringing with no parental supervision. He had no one. You know, it, it, he didn't even have the garbage man to help him out. You know, nothing. Growing up in North Memphis, Orr was one of 13 kids. With his father murdered and his mother facing a drug addiction, he was forced to fend for himself by the age of seven. I didn't have anybody there telling me to go to school and because it's gonna count. Got to school around lunchtime every day and only showed up to practice, then stay on top of things and just let, let them pass me through because I was an athlete. In hopes he could contribute to the basketball team, a friend's father brought Orr to Briarcrest Christian High School. The undesired trip would prove to be the turning point in Orr's life. You had to really spend some time to trace dates and times and where he had, had been in school, but I could tell initially that he had been academically deficient. He had a point four GPA when he came to Briarcrest. So the foundation was, was zero, but he's an extremely smart kid. He had enrolled in another program and it wasn't working for him. And I thought to myself, I, I really don't see how he can make it. So I said, okay, we'll take you. You'd be on an academic probation and we're not gonna allow you to participate in anything until we can see you know, some gradual and then dramatic improvement in your grades. I just remember thinking, that's the biggest person I've ever seen in my entire life, first, and then second, what is he doing, you know, at my school? On a chilly day over Thanksgiving break, while driving past the school, the Tui family saw Orr in cut-off jeans and a t-shirt walking to the gym. All that put together was very compelling. I mean, you just go, wait a minute, you know, I can do something. She obviously looked into his heart and saw that there was a whole lot needed more than, than just food. Michael just needed to be loved. I hugged him for a year before he ever even hugged me back. And I think that was probably the first time in his life that someone had true, that he really in his heart knew that somebody loved him for him. I felt like I was wounded here, you know. I think that's, that's what it was. I mean, it just felt like I was wanted and needed. Toward the end of his first semester, Orr was taken off probation and allowed to participate in athletics. Eventually, he found himself on the football field. Orr's immense size and sensational athleticism made him perfect for a lineman position. On the defensive line, we felt like we could line him up there and, and uh, he doesn't have to do a whole lot of thinking. Um, but quickly, uh, we kind of figured out his personality was more of an offensive lineman. Almost instantaneously, his rare combination of size and speed landed Orr as the number one offensive lineman prospect in the country, and everyone wanted his services. It was the fastest recruiting uh, of, of a high-profile kid in the history of, of America because he was not a prospect until February of his junior year. His recruiting only lasted four months. The Tui family was well known throughout Oxford, Mississippi. Sean starred as a basketball player at Ole Miss while Leanne cheered on the sidelines. Despite being heavily recruited from SEC powerhouses LSU and Tennessee, nothing could top following the legacy of his adoptive parents. He showed us that he was a, a, a diamond in the rough, if, if you would, um, with, with a tremendous amount of determination. It's just an instant when they come across that stage to see that look in his eye, um, you know, it meant, uh, it meant the world uh, to me to see him and to know that he'd achieved that and that he did have, a, a, he had a future. With high school diploma in hand and officially a part of the Tui family, Orr has been protecting the blind side at Ole Miss for the past three seasons, each year improving one intricate step at a time. Orr claims that life with the Tuies has not changed him, if you ask anyone else, though, this is not the same Michael Orr. 
Michael's probably the most outgoing person you'll meet. He has no problem asking a girl for her phone number, and he has lots of friends, and he has a great support system. I would have never thought when I first met him that this is who he would turn out to be. He'll always say, you know, I'll never forget what Briar Crest did to me. And, uh, you know, I think, well, Michael, you've, you've been a blessing to us, too.